is, Dad, first off, there's nothing homosexual about what we want you to do. I mean, I was thinking that you might be thinking that we want you to do something like weird sex thing, you know, like suck us off, paint us purple, shit like that. But nothing, nothing could be farther from the truth. Damn. Can I just cut in here a second, please? If the court pleases, allow me to introduce our intentions here. I second that nomination. I move that nomination be closed! Thank you. Court is yours, Leo. Thank you, Chester. Teddy, you ever heard of rural North American toaster wrangling? Uh... If you had, you'd remember by now. It's where wranglers compete to make perfect pieces of toast ten times in a row. And when they win, they get the finest goat in the village. But if they don't, the butcher cuts off their finger. And Norman and Chester here, they made the same bet. Norman here is bet, his pinky, that he can make perfect pieces of toast ten times in a row. And when he does, well, since Chester has no ghosts here, he'll win the MP3 player instead. It's full of the best shit, motherfucking tears for fears. If he doesn't, chop off his fucking finger, Teddy. <laughs> you guys are drunk. Yes! Of course, ah! of course we're drunk, Teddy. That's why we're here. But well, that doesn't mean that we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. I'll tell you what the fuck I'm talking God damn shit! Are you listening to me? Take a good long look at that damn machine over here this motherfucker's standing next to. That there's a 2004 Ship Black 30G Classic. I love that piece more than I love the hips, lips, and fingertips. Cut to, we're sitting here, celebrating, getting high, drinking, watching the TV, when we flip on the Discovery Channel, and they got them toast-making motherfuckers. And I look at this mother, this funny-looking motherfucker over here, and I say, I'd do that for your shit player. And that's what Chester says. Oh, really? You guys wouldn't be doing something this stupid if you weren't really fucking drunk. And I already told you, Teddy, we're drunk. <laughs> that goes without motherfucking saying, because if we wasn't drunk, we'd probably chicken out. Man, when you're fucked up, you tell the truth. You don't lie, man. You know what the fucking truth is? The fucking truth is my lucky coaches here is going to win me Chester's motherfucking piece. Which brings us to your part in this little wager, Ted. I don't have a part, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Like my old granddad used to say, shut the fuck up and listen. It's quite brilliant, sir. Thank you, thank you. Thing is, there are some inherent obstacles in this undertaking, aside from the obvious. First of which being the fact that I'm not like the butcher on the Discovery Channel. I'm not some sick fuck traveling the countryside collecting fingers. I'm much, much worse. I just want some fucking entertainment. And you know, no one here wants no one to lose his finger. We just want to chop it off and then laugh a little. I you know if fate doesn't smile down on old Norman, we'll put that fucker on ice, whisk it right off to the hospital, where in all likelihood they'll be able to sew it right back on. And you know, he'll enjoy a few weeks of excruciating recovery. Well, hopefully so. Yeah, well, they can sew that guy's button back on. I think it's that Norman's pinky back on. Yeah, how hard can it be? Good point. So, so Norman, he's taken care of. His interests have been looked after. My interests, on the other hand, have not. I am as emotionally attached to my MP3 player as Norman is physically to his finger. This is a fucking piece of expensive machinery I'm putting on this wager. And if I lose, I lose. That, that's, that's fine. That's no problem. I have no problem with that. I'm a big kid. I knew what the hell I was doing. But if I win, I want to win. All right? Now, if no one makes ten beautiful pieces of toast in a row, he'll have no emotional problem whatsoever about taking my soul. But if I win, it's not inconceivable to think that at the last minute, maybe neither Leo nor I will be able to wield the slinky. Uh, hatchet, sir. H hatchet. Wield the hatchet. Which brings us full circle to you, Ted. Clear-eyed Ted. Sober Ted. Easily manipulated Ted. Honky Ted. Just met us, couldn't give a fuck about us, Ted. We want you to be the butcher. Hell of a night, huh, Ted? Now pay attention, Ted. And what you have to realize is we're gonna do this thing one way or another. Whether it's you who holds the axe, or British whore, or some cams that we yank off the street. About a whole lot of ganja with that pal. Shh, I'm the closer here. Now, Ted. A person's life is filled with a zillion little experiences. Some of which are insignificant, have no meaning, and you know, you forget them. Others of which you remember for the rest of your natural life. Now, since what we're proposing here is so unusual, so outside the norm, 
So there's a very good chance this is going to be one of those incidences that sticks. So, since you're going to be stuck remembering this for the rest of your life, you have to decide what that memory will be. So, Ted, are you going to remember for the next 15 years, give or take a decade, that you refused all this for one second's worth of work? Or that you made all this for one second's worth of work? So, Ted, what's it going to be? Okay. Always be close. Right here, here. Right now. Before I change my mind. Let's get this shit over and done with. Perfect, perfect, perfect. This is one of those moments in time none of us are ever going to forget. Norman, are you ready? I'm ready. Ted, are you ready? Ready. Okie dokie, Norman, begin. Oh, you fucker. Fucking lady!